When coming face to face with the enemy, especially at such close quarters as you find in the jungle, you've got to be on the alert for surprise packages. These could be fragmentation and stick grenades, magnetic, mushroom, and beach mines. Of course, the names are familiar, but are you sure you know what they look like or how they're used? The six most commonly employed Japanese grenades and mines are shown here. The Jap magnetic mine, the Dutch mushroom mine, the fragmentation grenade, the stick grenade, the anti-tank mine type 93, and the largest, the beach mine. First, we'll discuss the fragmentation or hand grenade. It's made of cast iron with a two ounce explosive charge. Total weight, one pound. The fuse assembly unscrews from the grenade. The detonator that sets off the two ounce charge fits over the delay pellet. Both of these, in turn, fit inside the grenade when the assembly is screwed into place. This is the part of the fuse assembly containing the striker mechanism and safety pin. A cutaway reveals the striker and the safety pin which holds the striker in a safe position. Also the retaining spring and the percussion cap. After the safety pin is removed, the striker can be pushed down onto the percussion cap. In actual operation, you must give the end of the fuse a sharp, hard blow, so the striker will hit the cap with plenty of force. This is important, since the striker isn't spring operated. In combat, pull the safety pin. Smack the fuse against something hard. The cap ignites the fuse. The grenade explodes four and one half seconds later. The fragmentation grenade is a booby trap. This cutaway shows placement in a hollow section of bamboo with trip wire attached. It's secured by a wire, nail, or stick. Tripping of the wire releases the grenade so the fuse strikes a rock or any other solid object at the base of the bamboo section and explodes the grenade. The Jap stick grenade, whose component parts are the handle containing friction ignited and time fuse, the detonator, and fragmentation case with two ounce explosive charge. Total weight, one and a quarter pounds. The complete assembly of the grenade is accomplished as follows. The detonator is attached to the four and one half second delay action fuse. The fragmentation case, also fastened to the handle, is held in place by three screws. In the base of the handle are the pull ring and string attached to the friction fuse. The detonator fits over the end of the friction fuse. The pull cord is attached to the ring at the other end. This friction fuse works like a fuse lighter. Before using captured grenades, make sure the delay fuse is intact. Otherwise, the grenade will explode in your hands. To throw the grenade, remove the cap. Pull the cord to ignite the fuse. Four and one half seconds later, the grenade explodes. Here's the smallest of the Japanese mines, the magnetic mine. It consists of one and a half pounds of TNT covered with a canvas case, has a delay action fuse and four permanent magnets. The delay action fuse assembly is held in the mine by a collar. The delay may vary from the usual four and one half seconds to nine hours. After the safety pin is pulled, pressure on the end of the fuse activates the mine. 
Let's move in for a closer view of the fuse assembly, showing the safety pin hole and collar. Next, the fuse assembly in cross section. When pressure is applied to the cap, it moves down, compressing the striker spring. Then the spring-loaded striker is released when the locking balls move into the recesses. With the safety pin out of the way, the firing pin hits the percussion cap. Setting off the delay pellet, the detonator, and the main charge. This magnetic mine will stick to a tank when thrown from a distance of about 20 feet. Jap patrols like to sneak into our bivouacs and plaster vehicles with them. Long delay pellets are used, giving the patrols plenty of time to get away before the mines explode. The Japs also employ these magnetic jobs in pressure type booby traps. They'll plant them under boards and logs, so careless men will step on them and set off the mine. The anti-tank mine, type 93. It has an explosive charge of two pounds of picric acid. Total weight, three pounds. It's composed of three main parts, body, pressure cap, and fuse, containing either 70 pound or 250 pound shear pin. The fuse has a safety cap, when screwed into place, it prevents the striker from descending upon the percussion cap. To arm the mine, unscrew the safety cap. Then screw the fuse into the well. Remove the safety tab and one of the two washers before replacing the pressure cap. The washer must be used to waterproof the mine. Now we'll introduce a diagram of the Jap 93 mine, showing the body, carrying rings, pressure plate, pressure cap, and fuse. When pressure is applied here, the shear pin is broken. Then the striker spring forces the striker against the percussion cap. Setting off the detonator, which in turn explodes the booster and the main charge. When the mine is disarmed, the safety tab must be in place between the pressure cap and body of the fuse. Also, the safety cap must be on the head of the striker. Next, a lesson on the procedure that is to be followed when you locate an object that may be a mine. The first step is to carefully remove enough dirt so you can identify the mine. In this case, the protruding pressure cap and small size indicate that it's a Japanese Type 93. If an explosion won't give away your position and endanger the mine removal operations, the easiest way to dispose of the mine is to pull it out with rope or cable. Carefully uncover one of the carrying rings. Then fasten your tow line to it with a piece of wire. Take cover about 50 yards away and pull the mine out of the hole. If it's booby trapped, it'll explode. For hand removal, carefully uncover the top of the mine. Continue digging around the mine, checking for booby traps. And here's a nice reception. A stick grenade used as a booby trap. An unwary soldier picking up the mine would set off the grenade. 
The carrying ring on the mine is attached by wire to the friction fuse in the grenade. But after uncovering the wire and making sure it isn't taut, you can cut it. Following further check to be sure no additional booby traps are underneath the mine, it can be disarmed by unscrewing the pressure cap and taking out the fuse. Replace the cap and you're all set to carry the mine and fuse to the dump. The Dutch mushroom mine, captured in large quantities by the Japs in their New Guinea invasion. Explosive, five and a quarter pounds of TNT. Total weight, nine and a half pounds. The fuse has two parts, the striker mechanism and the detonator. Note the peculiar construction of the safety pin which passes through the hole in the striker. To arm the Dutch mushroom mine, insert the fuse into the well. The construction of the safety pin prevents the pressure cap from being screwed into place as long as the pin is in the fuse. But when the safety pin is removed, the pressure cap will go on very easily. Now the mine is ready for use. This cross section of the mine shows the container filled with explosive, the pressure cover, the pressure cap, the spring, and the fuse. When pressure is exerted on the striker, the pin is sheared, and the spring drives the striker against the percussion cap. Which in turn fires the detonator, the booster, and the main charge. The Dutch landmine is found on top of the ground or just below the surface. Treat it with caution and watch out for booby traps. Don't put pressure on top of the cover. The mine may be armed with fuse containing a 50-pound anti-personnel shear pin in place of the normal 250-pound anti-tank shear pin. After the carrying handle has been sufficiently uncovered, pull the mine out by a rope unless the situation requires some other method. The procedure for pulling by rope or cable is the same as before. After the wire is inserted through the carrying handle, you're ready to yank the mine out. Take cover at least 50 yards away. Just make sure you don't pull from a spot that's been prepared for you by the Japs. Prepared with a mine connected to the one you're pulling out. In removal by hand, carefully clear the dirt from around the mine and look for booby traps attached to the sides or underneath. One of the Japs' favorite tricks is a prepared charge with pull fuse attached to the mine. First cut the wire and disarm the fuse. When you are certain that there are no booby traps, you are ready to disarm the mine itself. Grasp the edge of the pressure cover with your fingertips and using the thumbs of both hands, Unscrew the pressure cap counterclockwise. After removing the pressure cap, insert and secure a wire through the safety pin hole and unscrew the fuse from the well. Replace the pressure cap and take out the mine. Now we're ready for the largest Japanese mine, the beach mine, explosive, 47 pounds. 
Total weight, including cast iron case, 106 pounds. The explosives set off electrically when either lead horn is crushed by a force of about 250 pounds. Main parts of the mine are the switch assembly, the lead horns, the electric wiring, the electric detonator, the booster, and the main charge. This bolt attached to the safety fork screws into the top of the plunger. After the plunger is lifted by the bolt, the safety fork is inserted as it is here. When the safety fork is removed from the plunger, this spring forces the plunger down against the electric contacts. The electric contacts in turn are connected to the electrical wiring system. When the plunger is down, the circuit is closed and the mine is armed. At the base of each horn is a small battery. It doesn't put out current at this time because there's no acid in the battery. The acid is in a glass tube up in the lead horn. When the horn is crushed, the acid flows down into the battery and the current is generated. As you see here, these wires conduct the electric current from the batteries through the switch to the electric detonator. Crushing of either horn will send the current through the detonator, setting off the booster and the main charge. The beach mine may be used as underwater obstacle or land mine. Here it's employed in a barbed wire entanglement. Vehicles or men running into the wire exert a pull on it, breaking the lead horn and setting off the mine. Since water and sand can get in the switch, causing the mine to be armed even though the safety fork's in place, it's best not to disarm this beach mine. Instead, as shown, first cut the wire so that the mine won't accidentally explode while working on it. Then tape a blasting cap to the horn and destroy the mine. These babies can also be booby-trapped very easily on the inside, so don't fool around with them unless there's no other choice. Take cover at least 200 yards away and let her blow. And with this understanding of Jap grenades and mines, you're better prepared to move in and tackle the enemy. Remember, grenades and mines can be as dangerous as firepower. Your knowledge of their use, component parts, and rapid disarming often means the difference between life and death. So keep the lessons of this film always in mind, and beat the Jap to the punch. <laughs>